Hi there and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Angie and I'm a chemist who loves makeup. And today's topic is an interesting one. So you might be familiar with the Sephora kids phenomenon that's been happening in which these kids like preteen under the age of 13 are going into Sephora and buying not makeup but skincare and not like the ordinary. They're buying Drunk Elephant, Glow Recipe, very expensive brands, even for a lot of adults that would purchase these. Well, California is looking to change that. Bill AB 2491 is being introduced by Alex Lee, and the goal of this bill is to ban children from buying skincare that is harmful to their skin. I'll link the full context of this bill down below, but the summary of this bill is that any product that is a cosmetic product that is labeled as anti-aging, that contains any sort of vitamin A derivative, so retinol type products, or AHA alpha hydroxy acids that contain ingredients like glycolic acid or even citric acid that contain things like glycolic acid, vitamin C, citric acid. So basically any place that sells these kind of products has to ensure that their products are not sold to individuals under the age of 13. And it says taking a reasonable step. So some reasonable steps they give is IDing people who buy this product, putting signs next to these specific kind of products that these are not intended for use of any individuals under the age of 13. So as I mentioned, this bill was introduced by Alex Lee. Alex Lee is a member of the California Assembly and is based out of the Bay Area. So he is 28 years old. I'm not sure if he has children. If he does, they probably are a lot younger. That's just me assuming. Or maybe he has siblings. But I'm very curious what the motivation was to introduce this bill. It kind of feels like maybe the introduction of this bill is a way to put himself on the map because obviously the whole Sephora kids trend has been a pretty big thing as of late. Personally, I disagree with this bill. I think it's going to put a lot of unnecessary controls in place that are not going to actually protect said children that it's aiming to protect. Of course, this is a conversation between you and I, so please leave down below if you think this bill will be effective, do you think it's necessary, but I'm going to give you some of my reasons, but I would love to know what you think prior to me sharing my thoughts. First of all, the conditions of what requires this kind of warning or restrictions of who can buy it is that it has to be labeled as an anti-aging product, which I think is interesting because not every product that uses, for instance, alpha hydroxy acids or vitamin C specifically mentions anti-aging. There are examples of which it just says it's an exfoliant. For instance, the Youth to the People, their AHA toner, which I love, does not mention at all that it is an anti-aging product, only that it is an exfoliant. The other thing which I thought was interesting was the citric acid. So I've always known citric acid as like a pH adjuster, so I thought it was very interesting that they've called this out specifically. I've never seen citric acid used as the active ingredient in a formulation, so I'm not sure that the ingredients are very well thought out. I feel like if these kind of products always need these notification, it's people are going to get desensitized to it. The biggest example where I could think of this being a thing is also in California where Prop 65 exists in which places like at Starbucks, there'll be a Prop 65 sign saying if you consume things there, you could potentially get cancer or on old buildings, this will happen. And these signs are so many places that it doesn't actually do anything because then it, it just seems like everywhere you're gonna be exposed to this. So therefore, having that requirement is just a waste of everybody's time at that point. The other thing that I think is issue with this is that it only goes up to age 13. So it's not even like you need to be an adult to buy it. You just have to show you're over the age of 13. And 13 seems like an arbitrary number at that point. I'm not sure what the difference between, that's not like a legal age, it's not the age that you're able to start working, for instance. Um, it just seems very arbitrary. And most likely at that age, because like I said, 
until you're like 16, you're probably not working or making your own money. So you would be getting your money from your parents anyway, or the parents will be there to buy, especially since this seems very focused on those drunk elephant glow recipe, TikTok viral skincare. At the end of the day, I think the ultimate responsibility falls on the parents. Um, if they're going to sit there and buy them like a $75 serum or a moisturizer, then I think it's on them to research what they are buying for their kid. And if their kid saw it on TikTok, who are they watching? And then also for some kids, maybe some of these products are actually beneficial. And then also like when I was growing up, we were destroying our face with the St. Ives apricot scrub, all the Neutrogena like acne products that I could get my hands on. So like this experimentation thing is going to be a thing. Do I think these kids need all of this? Absolutely not. But I think ultimately that's for the parents to kind of work with their child, see what they're buying, explain to them the why maybe that's not the best for them. And ultimately I think this is probably just gonna affect retailers and make it more of a pain for them than anything. Cause like I said, Parents are clearly spending the money on this. These 13 year olds are not getting all this money out of nowhere, I would think. And there are a couple solutions maybe to steer these kids away from the heavy active ingredients. We have brands like Florence by Mills that's definitely more targeted towards a younger demographic. And a lot of their products are more gentle or better for younger skin that doesn't need a lot of harsh actives. And maybe they can see this gap in the market, work with these influencers to steer kids more in that direction, as well as retailers like Ulta and Sephora need to capitalize on this. A lot of clothing stores when I was growing up, I remember had like a junior section for when you were younger, but not quite like wanting like the woman clothes. Maybe Ulta and Sephora need to capitalize on this too and have something like My First Skincare to put like semi more affordable options that don't have a lot of active ingredients that just teach these kids about the basics of skincare. To sum up my thoughts, I think that this bill is very unnecessary. I don't think it's actually going to protect these kids' skin. And I think ultimately, if parents are spending the money on this, they need to ensure that what they are buying is going to be safe for their child's skin. Before you leave, please don't forget to click that subscribe button. That way you will always be informed whenever I have a new video posted. With that, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.